This guide is going to be a little different than usual, being that I normally talk about a specific combat style at a boss in the form of a guide, or sometimes I will go a little more abstract and talk about a general idea. But today we are going to do a general overview on RuneScape's combat system. And if this guy can learn the combat system, then you can too. By the way, that's Sirtex, he's a good friend of mine, feel free to check out his links below, yada yada. Anyways, let's get right into this guide. So some of you might have played old school back in the day, or played RuneScape back when it was old school, and you remember the auto attack system where you just click a target, and based on the gear that you are wearing, that would determine your damage and it automatically fires. And as you can see, that system is still in place. There are still auto attacks. However, auto attacks are not the forefront in damage anymore, and they haven't been since uh, EOC has come out. There are methods to use auto attacks to squeeze out damage. However, that's going to be a little bit later on in the video. The main way to do damage in RuneScape is with abilities. It is an ability-based combat system, meaning that I go up to a target and I press these buttons that are bound to abilities, press the abilities, and then do damage based on those. And as you can see, that is a lot more damage popping up than just letting auto attacks go off the rip. So how does this all work? Well, you'll notice when I press abilities, I can't just kind of just spam them all at once. Like if I press all these keys, I'm only getting one ability about every 1.8 seconds or exactly 1.8 seconds. And the reason for that is this thing called global cooldown, meaning that there is a universal period of time in which you cannot cast other abilities. And that amount of time is 1.8 seconds or three game ticks. Now you may have heard the term game tick from other games. Uh, Battlefield players back in the day definitely know about game ticks or tick rates, meaning how many times the game can give you an update with information per second. Uh, back then it was like 15 hertz tick rate, which is only 15 updates per second, which in a shooter game is definitely on the low end. Some of you CSGO players out there are probably gloating on either 120 or even I think some 240 hertz tick rates, meaning 240 updates per second with information on what's going on in game as far as position or anything like that is concerned. And RuneScape's game tick system is 0.6 seconds per game tick. Now, obviously you get a lot more visual updates than one every 0.6 seconds or else our frame rates would be terrible. And animations don't operate on the game tick system. The game tick system is how the combat system specifically works. And a few other systems that tie into it, however, any type of game interaction is going to be on the tick system. There is probably a few exceptions, but as you notice, if I turn on prayers, the prayer drain will decrease every game tick, a uh, certain number of prayer points per tick. And this is what a lot of people will use as a tick counter or a tick timer in order to understand when the game ticks are actually happening until they build up kind of like an internal rhythm. And before you know it, you're not even thinking, you're just always moving and doing things in game tick uh, rhythm. Humans are naturally rhythmic creatures so it's kind of easy to build that up some people it'll be faster than others but eventually you will get it anyways i digress another thing you might have noticed is that some abilities i can't just press them over and over again if i sit here and press e to try and do decimate for example i have to wait for it to come completely off cooldown before i can press it again now this is known as ability cooldown now ability cooldowns exist so you can't just press the same ability over and over again that happens to be the best one getting free damage and it forces us to speak in terms of rotations and in short a simple definition for rotation is the order of abilities over a given period of time and so when you start to hear things like berserk rotation sunshine rotation threshold rotation when you start to hear these terms kind of get thrown around you'll now understand what people are talking about and most of the time rotation speak is often in terms of trying to optimize the set amount of damage Damage in that given space of time. Because everyone likes doing more damage. Big numbers go burr, they give neuron activation, you feel good after big hit spam. It's what everyone wants. Now if you've watched my other guides, you'll see me talk about rotations and give out rotations all the time. I'm just showing what abilities I'm pressing when. And this is kind of the background information on why I do that, because we can't just sit there and spam assault 24-7 or hurricane every tick or overpower as much as we'd love to be able to press that, which will lead us into all these numbers are, are your health, your adrenaline, your amount of prayer left, and your summoning points. These used to be on the old interface, kind of around the mini-map in a circle. Actually, if I load into the legacy interface,
interface, those will be there. So if I go legacy interface, you'll see we have health, prayer, summoning points, and adrenaline is over here, but the original ones over here, including run energy, those got moved to the ability bar when uh, RS3 came out and we got the customizable UI. Now you can also switch over to a precise adrenaline amount where you'll see the decimal point, which is nice because some things will give, you know, 0.2% adrenaline or 0.6. This one gives 0.5 every game tick for because of the vestments uh, effect and the reason we have to worry about adren management is there are different types of abilities out there and i kind of have my bar organized as such as a little couple outliers but basically you have basic abilities you have threshold abilities and you have ultimate abilities Basic abilities typically have shorter cooldowns. They don't do as much damage, but they generate adrenaline. So you see I'm on 103.5 right now. If I sit here and use a couple basics, if I use two here, I'll be at 120, which is the cap for wearing full vestments. If I didn't have the armor set on, or if I was using literally any other armor in game and didn't have the specific relic buff, 100% adrenaline is the maximum. And that is typically the requirement for ultimates. Uh, there are things in game that can reduce the cost of adrenaline cost on ultimates, such as the Zuck Cape buffing overpower to only require 60%, but if I were to pull this off, it would be 100% per usual. And thresholds cost 15% adrenaline, but they do more damage than your basic abilities, although they usually have longer cooldowns. There are some exceptions. For instance, here we have Sever, which is a 188. 188 refers to the percentage of ability damage at its highest. As you can see here, it says 37 to 188% ability damage. If we go into the hero tab and hit load out, you'll see we have uh, for ability, we have an ability damage. This is the number that it is based off of and that is where you actually get effects from like armor and whatnot affecting these numbers it doesn't affect it by a whole lot a lot of it comes from the weapons themselves but anyways i digress as you can see like sever has a 15 second and greater flurry is only 20 seconds they're pretty close in cooldown but most basics like decimate or cleave they're all on a pretty short cooldown like 7.2 here slice is a three second cooldown 10.2 you see these are all relatively short cooldowns whereas destroy assault flurry they're all kind of 20 seconds and above but they do a lot more damage so as a quick recap of all that rambling basic abilities are weaker have shorter cooldowns but give you adrenaline threshold abilities do more damage but they cost 15 percent adrenaline and have longer cooldowns and ultimate abilities are typically the strongest or they buff all other forms of damage cost 100 percent adrenaline and have a long cooldown now you may have seen some speed kills or some clips pop around on Twitch or on Twitter, somewhere else, even in discords of some speed killers doing some wild things where you see an insane number of hits per tick. And the simple concept around that is called stalling. And how stalling works in short is you're casting an ability outside of the maximum attack range of a combat style to then release it with the next ability. And with melee, this is easiest to explain because melee melee has a one tile attack range unless you're using something like a scythe but if you notice if I come out here and I press an ability my character walks in to use it however if I go ahead and spam click the ground as I press the ability and then release it the ability is stalled until I get back into combat distance and then I just let the animation release and press my next ability and there are some interesting mechanics with stalling being that I can stall an ability here bladed dive and then release and then the ability comes out and with melee's case you can stall cleave you can then run in and do, release it with decimate and it kind of allows you to not really waste abilities was the original intention with stalling now there is a whole world about different use cases of what abilities can stall what they can't stall uh, what they can be released with what they can't be released with how many inputs you can get to stack per game tick or on a release of a global cooldown there is a entire world out there as far as ability stalling i just wanted to explain the general concept of what going on behind the scenes and yes this does work with any combat style if i go ahead and grab some gear here we can just show that off real quick so one thing we can do here is stand this is the max cast range in this instance for magic so if we stand on this tile 
stall an ability and then click, you can release it. You can also use things like other spells. Uh, most people use smoke cloud or things to release those abilities, but it works with any combat style. And with magic specifically or range specifically, something you can do is actually equip a melee offhand and cast the ability, then put your magic offhand back on, and then release the stall with another ability. Now the stall is just gonna go off on its own and it does not trigger global cooldown. That is the big important thing about ability stalling. Not triggering global cooldown with a stalled ability because you already incurred the GCD to get the ability stalled allows you to combo the ability with something else and you can get a lot of damage out per tick. Again, I'm not gonna go into some of the ridiculousness. If you guys wanna see a video where I go through and actually kind of explain world records and explain the rotations they're using, the mechanics behind the scenes. That is a series I do want to start doing at some point. Leave it in the comments below if you're interested in that. Now, if you want more in-depth rotations or more in-depth videos, that's what my other guides are for. If you want more style-specific DPS guides, I believe I have a melee DPS guide out still that isn't completely outdated. I have a DPS guide out for post-FSOA nerf, and I also have a bulk DPS guide that I'm pretty sure is up-to-date with modern rotations. However, I don't think it has elite Dracolich rotations. You can find those out on my channel if you want more specific detail on DPS. DPS rotations for those combat styles. You may have noticed when I'm switching weapons, you will also see that my ability bar is changing to a different one that has two hand abilities on it rather than dual wield. And if you want to know more about these specific binds I use and why I use them, how I set all of that up, I do have a keybind guide on the channel. But what you are seeing here is something known as action bar binding. If you hit escape, go to settings, and then go into combat action bar under the gameplay tab. Action bar binding, you will see a bunch of different setups here. And in short, all you're doing is adding any type of weapon equip. You can split it up between dual wield, two handed, or any, which allows you to bind any of the action bars you may have to certain weapon or combat style types. Now I did mention that auto attacks still exist in an ability based combat system. And the main way they're utilized is what you will typically notice is that dual wield weapons are either fast or fast fastest, at least on the old system. Now they actually give out on the attack rate, the actual speed at which they go at. Whereas two-handers are a bit slower. Uh, think of this as like prod weapons back in the PvP days where you would be using a whip or something. And then when the opponent was about half, you pull out a prod whip to try and just two-hand slam them for a massive hit. And you can kind of use that in today's combat system where say use an ability, swap to your two-hand, wait a couple ticks, and then use uh, the, let the auto attack fire, and then you would hit another ability. So once again, use the ability, swap over to two hand, wait for it, and then use your two hand ability and kind of rotate back and forth, dual wield ability, wait. And this is known as five tick auto attacking. The only place I know of five tick auto attacking being used is at Telos with melee kills. And that is more so for timing out stuns with Telos' specific stun mechanics. And magic has a kind of a unique use case with auto attacks being that you can keybind the spells, which for magic, those are the auto attacks. You just right click auto cast to set which one you want normally. And that is just the spell type that you use, that's what's used for the auto attack damage or as part of the calculation for that. Because you have different spells that are different levels, so they're gonna give you different damage values and whatnot. And what you can do is then keybind your spell and then wait for the global cooldown and then force the auto attack one tick earlier than usual because it is keybound. Thus, four tick auto attacking is a thing with magic. And with the FSOA changes, that is now back on the menu. I feel a little bit like a broken record at this point, but if you want a video dedicated to 4-tick auto-attacking, I have that on my channel as well, showing the actual specifics and some rotations with that. Now I can talk about the combat system and abilities and damage rotations, all of this fun stuff for hours on end. However, I understand for learning this stuff, I should probably not overload y'all too much and try and put a bunch of information out there at once. So I'll try and keep this video a bit shorter here. But if you would like a more in-depth video on a specific combat related topic, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Or if you'd like me to re-go over a topic or something like that in more detail. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below what you want to see, but I think I'm going to call the video here. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate the viewership as always. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next video. Peace.